And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And now over in John chapter 2, verse, I'm going to start at verse 13. How's that? We'll have a couple extra verses. Verse 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of the money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. Now, Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God. We thank you that it's inerrant and it gives an accurate, perfect record of what you've given us and what we have just read tonight. So I pray that you'd help us tonight to open our hearts and ears to your word. I know there's something you want to get through to all of us tonight in one way, shape, or manner, so I pray that you'd have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. So we've got two instances here where Jesus actually went into the temple. This was two times he went in. In John chapter 2, he went right in after the, after the miracle of turning the water to wine at the wedding feast. All right, so that was his first miracle. Then he goes into the temple clears it right out. This is right at the start of his ministry. You get to Matthew 21, and now <clears throat> it's, he's made his triumphal entry. He came in on a, a, a donkey. Uh, the people sang Hosanna. They cried Hosanna to God in the highest. <clears throat> and then what's he do? He jumps down, goes right to the temple. He cleared it out. I mean, I, I would love to see that. I hope he's got a video where it shows of him cleaning out that temple there. Because I, I think this is a picture of Jesus the world just doesn't quite get. And, and frankly, there, it's, I don't get it. Here's God in flesh, but I think of this Jesus as, Oh, peace be to you, brother. Oh, may God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless the little children. And <laughs> I'm just kidding there. <clears throat> no, I'm not kidding about blessing the children. But, you know, you get this, if you've, seen any of these Jesus movies he's a white guy with this little scrawny little goofy looking guy and he looks like he's I'm, I don't mean to be gross but he looks constipated oh bless you no that's, that wasn't Jesus whatsoever I mean he gets loose in this temple and he was turning the tables we're going to rewind a little bit here in 1980 Ronald Reagan was running for president against Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy said, President, Mr. Reagan, Governor Reagan voted against this. He voted against this. He voted against this. And then Reagan said the epic words, well, there you go again. And just the, that zinger, that started the idea of presidential debates and the zinger. But he nailed, some of you weren't even around when Jimmy Carter was here, were you, when he was president? Dave, were you alive when Reagan was president? You were in diapers, I bet. <laughs> Doug was probably in grade school. I'll just stop there. But he said, there you go again. And that, that was like, he said what everybody wanted to say as a, as an American citizen, Jimmy Carter bashed America first. The reason there's problems in this world is you, you've turned your furnace up too high, George. You, you, you eat too well, Ralph. You go to Golden Corral too many times. You, you're putting a strain on the food of, in this country and the world, and people are starving because he was blaming America. And so when Reagan said, well, there you go again, I loved it. A couple days before the election, Reagan asked this question. He said, are you better off? Ask yourself this question, folks. Are you better off than you were four years ago? 
When you go to the grocery store, are you better off at what you're paying and what you're buying at the grocery store? He could have said this again this year. He said, are you, are you getting your money's worth at the gas pump? Uh, I'm, fact, I'm uh, uh, paraphrasing. He says, is the, is the security of our country better now than it was four years ago? I mean, that's pretty good for today. And maybe that's something we should think about when we, when we go to the polls. But at any rate, he said that, and it resonated with the American people. And then out of all the electoral votes, I think Jimmy Carter won one state, Georgia. He turned the tables. And tonight, Jesus, we have a picture of Jesus turning the tables. And I want to talk about for a few moments when Jesus turns the tables. Now, I want to say a few prefatory comments here. One of them is that he turns the tables, when he turns the tables, there must be something out of order or awry or something's not right. It was not right in the temple. So usually when he turns the tables, something ain't right. Two, when he turns the tables, somebody benefits. We just read in Matthew that when he turned the table, the second time he turned the tables, all the sheep, oxen, goats, money changers, everybody's cleared out of the temple. And so here comes the lame. They poured into the temple. And he healed them. <clears throat> so when he turned the tables here, other people benefit. People benefit when Jesus turns the tables. Next, his will and purpose is done whether he turns the tables or doesn't. I would say a lot of us here have some tables, so to speak, that need to be turned. Many of us have had tables that were turned. But God is not obligated to turn every table. I think of Brother Dennis. I wanted God to reverse his disease and bring him back and help him and bring him back to church. But God didn't turn that table, did he? It's, for me, sad. I know many of you, it's sad that he's not here and asking questions in Sunday school, questions that <laughs> were really tricky. I just, he's just asking them to the Lord now. <clears throat> but, you know, he turned that table for Dennis. The disease is gone. He's not suffering. He is, Dennis was God's possession. And God can do with his possessions what he wants to do, whether I like it or not. <clears throat> So I was blessed by Brother Dennis, but he was God's, and not my toy to, to deal with and play with. Now his will, he will turn tables when it comes to righteousness, holiness, justice, and mercy. Next, some tables are turned quickly. Like in this that we've read tonight, it didn't take him years to turn the tables. He went in there and he let it fly. I was going to set up some tables tonight because I wanted to play Jesus. I mean, I won't, nah, just never mind that. But I did want to play the part. So some tables are turned quickly, but some can take years, but it's in God's timing. You remember a man named Joseph. In Genesis 37, Joseph, he was one of 12 of the boys of Jacob. It took 13 years of prison time before God turned, his, turned the tables for, for Joseph. So it's not in our timing, but it's in God's timing. And some go like that. Some, I'm taking my time on this one. Because there's just so much that God's got as far as his purpose goes. What he was doing in Joseph's life those 13 years. And then there are some tables that, that we have tables in our lives that we overturn. We have to overturn some tables. We have to differentiate and we have to have wisdom for where it's God's job for this table to be turned or is it my job? Does God expect me to turn a table? And so it's wisdom to, to know the difference. So if there's a Mack truck coming at me and I'm standing in the road, <laughs> okay, Lord, turn the tables. Honk, honk, Lord, turn the tables. Honk, flat. 
Well, guess what? That wasn't God's job to turn the table and, and, and make that Mack truck take a dirt road. He gave me eyeballs and a brain and some, some nerves, and here it comes. Whoa! Get out of the way. <laughs> so we need to have some wisdom regarding that, that, whatever those tables may be. Now, I've got four different outlines here today. I've got four. I, this is crazy. I got my main outline, and I said, well, wait a minute. Let's look at this one here. And then I said, well, I like that one, too. And then I, I started writing another one down, and I like that one, too. <laughs> then I had another one I started writing down. I said, now, Lord, what am I going to do? I got, I got four outlines of Jesus turning the tables so I hope the Lord turns the table on me tonight and, uh, in a good way and we can get, get it squared away. The first time when he, turned the, when he turned both of these tables, God turned the tables on a defiled sanctuary. Would you agree with that? That the sanctuary was defiled. Here are money changers. Oh, we got lambs over here. Ralph, come on. Come on, we can we make a good deal for you. Now, the money changers, what they were doing is, we're going to change the Ethiopian. Let's pretend Ralph's Ethiopian tonight. He's a Jewish convert. He's a Jewish proselyte. But he's coming to Passover. So he wants to have an offering. So he comes in with his monetary unit. Ah, we like to see you, Ralph. You come over here. We get you fixed up here. You want sheep? You want goat? What do you want? I want a dove. All right, the dove. Ten shekels, please. He coughs up ten shekels and Ethiopian shekels. They go, oh, sorry, Ralph, you need five more shekels to make the exchange because our shekel, the temple shekel, is much more valuable than your shekel. And he's lying through his no good teeth. Jo Ralph reaches into his pocket, gives him five more shekels. So what does this guy do? He takes a couple of shekels, puts it in his pocket, gives him his dove or whatever the animal was he was going to do. They were making merchandise of the people. Does that make sense? They were doing that just wholesale in the temple. And so there's goats, sheep, uh, lambs, doves, all kinds of stuff there, all kinds of commerce. Jesus said, you, you have made my father's house a house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. And then he went and turned over the tables. So it was a defiled sanctuary. Our church stands as a table turner to our community and our county and our country. We stand here, we stand on this book right here. All right? There are contemporary Bibles out there. And I'm not going to just get railing on them all there, but you have what you have when you have contemporary Bibles. We have contemporary music. You have what you have with contemporary music. We're not going to follow that kind of thing. We're going to stand for the word. We're going to put out the gospel. We're going to go out for missions. We're going to support missionaries. We're going to go on and we're going to overturn tables by the grace of God. And what they've got with the smoke and movie theaters and what was that? What They had the smoke blowing in. What did they call that? Smoke in, in some of these uh, churches. Okay, wow, hey, that really makes me feel close to the Lord. <laughs> so, we don't need it. I'll tell you what, if the Holy Ghost shows up, then there's going to be smoke enough. So, we need Him. The United Methodist Church. Oh, my goodness, I saw something. that They're having a conference somewhere, and they were standing up and introducing themselves. I'm... So and so and so. My pronouns are he, him, her, they, she, he, and it. I'm Bobby and I'm a he, him. I'm Billy. I'm a whatever I'm going to be. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Well, that's that LGBT woke stuff is they've defiled the temple. Well, we stand against it, amen? amen. And we're just not going to have that here. Our church stands against these, and the Lord turns the tables when we have tent revivals, and when we have a food pantry, and when we have Bible study, and when we support missionaries. And I want to stay a part of turning that table with the Lord. That's our part that we've got there. Jesus also 
God also turns the tables on a depraved sinner. In Acts chapter 9, we have the story of the Saul who persecuted Christians, murdered them. You remember one of the most graphic murders that he was a part of was when Stephen was stoned. Stephen preached the gospel in, in, in uh, Acts chapter 7. I mean, he took them right from Genesis, took them all the way to the birth of Christ and the ministry of Christ. And they said, what did he say? The Lord is pricking your hearts, boys. And uh, as he got done preaching, they gnashed on him with their teeth. They took him over to a, a place where they were going to stone him, and Paul was right there. Come on, boys, let's get him. Mitch, do you want to play Stephen tonight? No? I was kind of hoping you would. Well, anyhow, they get him, and he's, he's just... He's off the rails. They drag Stephen out, and he's still, by Jesus saves, Jesus saves. I mean, he's singing, he's praising the Lord. They take him out there, throw him down. Paul says, give me your clothes, let's stone him to death. So, you know what they did. But as he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The Bible says that Stephen had the face as, as it was, a face of an angel. Amen. Now, how's he going to have that face of an angel when they're throwing big old rocks? I mean, they're, they're smacking a man. They're, <clears throat> there's one in the ribs, one in the leg. And so finally he goes down and bam, one in the face. Teeth are knocked out. Blood's coming down his face, but he had the face of an angel. And he's making his comments before he gave his life. And he said, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. And then they just said, get up, finish him. But he died. He went to be with the Lord. I don't think Saul could get away from that face that he had. He said, I, Lord, die. Hey, I'm doing your work, Lord. I'm getting rid of this false prophet. I got rid of this thing out of your sight. And so he was kind of patting himself on the back. Oh, that's good. But he just couldn't get it. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What's he talking about? Father, forgive them. He can't mean me. What's he preaching to me? Oh, yeah, he was preaching to Saul. But he couldn't get it out of his mind. Couldn't get it out of his mind. Couldn't get it out of his mind. And by Acts chapter 9, you know the story. He was on the road to Damascus getting ready to persecute more Christians. He had a letter. He had letters from the uh, religious Pharisees and all those folks there to take him into custody, do whatever he wanted to do. Then the Lord turned the tables on him. Yeah. Right there, man, right there at midday. God turns on a spotlight. He falls off his horse. He's looking up. All the others are going, you know, scared to death. Well, wouldn't you? You know, if it's noon out and you're going to get some chow somewhere and all of a sudden, a light turns on. It's so bright, it's brighter than the sun. I'd be going, uh-oh. And that's what he did. And he said, uh, 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 Paul, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he goes, who, who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Uh, you mean who Stephen was talking about, that's, that's you? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. And you did that to my servant. Didn't really care for that a whole lot, but he's with me. And then he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? The Lord overthrew his table when it concerned salvation. He turned the table on a depraved sinner. Well, I'm not depraved. Oh, yeah, every one of us here, we're all depraved sinners. If you took our life and put Jesus here, can you be, are you as holy, righteous, and worthy as Jesus Christ? Oh, no. No, no, no. First thing I ever stole, I stole it from Irv's Peckham's Variety Store. I stole these little lick made things that had, you remember lick made You pull a thing and pour it in the water and it fizz a little bit and made flavored water. Okay, nobody here. <laughs> okay, that's been a while back, you know, when I was four years old. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I gotta gotta remember that stuff here. Oh, we've got one that admits it. Okay. Yeah. Well, then they put this in, instead of the little packet, like a Kool-Aid packet, they put it in a straw, so you could just pull the straw off and. Yep. I was about four and a half, five years old. I stole them right there in front of them. I just, you know, popped them off. I don't know if the other kid, I, I was with another kid. I, he didn't pay for them. That, you know why? Because I'm depraved. You say, well, that's just stealing. But that's depraved. Jesus wouldn't do any stealing like that. When he was a kid, when Jesus was a, a little child, he didn't go to Peckham's and go, I don't know, I'm going to lift this. So we all have that depravity. But God turns the table on him. God turned the tables on Brother Ralph. Can you imagine that? Brother Ralph, Brother Ralph was 68 years old when he accepted Christ as a Savior. When you were 18, was it 18? One of Ralph and one of his friends were walking down the road. And while they were walking down that road, a car came by. I don't know if he was drunk or not. He slammed into Ralph's best friend at the time, right? And he, that, die, that fella died. Ralph was spared. But 42 years later, or 50, Let's say you were 18, so 1868. So 50 years later, a half a century later, the Lord saves Brother Ralph. He turned the tables on Ralph. Brother Nathan, how old were you when you got saved? 12? 14. So he was in church, and uh, up until this time, a uh, preacher just preached, and well, at this particular time, it didn't go foof, it went <laughs> Right there, right there in the heart. And guess what? The Lord overturned his tables. Brother Doug, his tables got overturned. What do you want, Lord? <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Here I am. <laughs> he turned Brother Dave's table over, amen? He used his brother and the, and the sickness that your brother had and the trouble that he had physically and his passing. He used that to turn your table over. So he turns the tables over, and if he's working on your heart, that's good. He's getting ready to turn your table over for a good thing. When he turns tables over, good things happen. And salvation is a good thing to happen. Well, <clears throat> he turns our tables over regarding salvation. He turns our tables over regarding sanctification. Sanctification is a big word that means to be made holy. So as a child of God, God wants you to live and be conformed to his image. And if we're not, then he just takes us to the woodshed. He doesn't disown us. You go to the woodshed. I've been to the woodshed many times in my life. I know it's a shock for most of you to believe that. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate that uh, confirmation. <laughs> oh, yeah. I told my mom, I ah, shut up. I watched too much of the Bowery Boys when I was a kid. And they talked that, that, that New York stuff, 32 and Tate Street. You got a quarter? Ralph, you got a quarter. Ralphie boy. <laughs> so I, my mom and my aunt are out there. I've told her the story before. I told her, ah, shut up. Now, that was the first thing I did wrong there. I should have never addressed my mother that way. My second mistake was I didn't run out. I didn't run away. I run out the backyard. I ran into the house. Bad mistake. My mom was lit up. Boy, I mean, it, Charlie ain't going to get away from me this time. My mom was about this tall. Well, maybe about that, about that tall. I went around the kitchen table. She hurdled it. Picked me up. We went on a whaling expedition. And that was good. I never told her that again. I'll tell you what, that was good. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, that, that, but that was helping me as a child. That was helping sanctify my life. And your parents, when they gave you the whoopings, those of you that may have got a whooping, uh, did that help you or not? It did. For me, I, I didn't want to go out and do stuff that would embarrass my dad, my, our, our family name. So when it comes to our sanctification, that's what God wants. He wants to be able to take us and mold us. And if it comes down to chastisement, he'll do it. He'll turn the tables when it comes to our being more holy and conformed to his image, our sanctification, so to speak. 
And I'm going to cite Brother Nathan again because when he got saved, he kind of got away from the Lord there for a couple of years. And it wasn't very sanctified, was it, Brother? And I'll leave that, but, uh, well, he kind of sold some stuff. Hey, man, hey, you need some of this here. This stuff is good, Mitch, man, hey. All right? I don't say that in jest. I don't say that to embarrass Brother McCoy. I just say that's, he turned some drug sales, made some money. And the Lord said, no, 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 we're not going to do that, brother. So he sent 5-0 to visit him. When I, you know what I'm saying when I say 5-0? The popo, the popo going to come and visit Brother McCoy. And they chased him, right? Did I get that right? They, they followed you to your house. You went in and fed your dog and wanted to feed him for the last time before you went to the pokey. Is that pretty close? Guess what? They fit, did they fit you up in some uh, uh, arm bracelets? Some, some of that? Front and front or behind? Behind. Yeah, guess what God was doing? Got to shake him up a little bit. Got to turn his table. Oh, yes, amen. He turned his table. He turns our tables to get us to be conformed to his image, doesn't he? Samson was another one. Samson, Samson was pretty wild himself and had his eyes gouged out and his hair cut. And then he was grinding in the, uh, in the, in the heathen temple. But his hair grew back. But God had to chasten him a little bit. So in the area of our chastening, God can turn some tables. In the area of our service for the Lord, our place of service and our participation in the service, God can turn our tables. And he's, he has to turn our tables to wake us up sometimes. In the place of service, well, I use Brother McCoy once again. We're sitting here tonight, and we saw the tables turned. We saw the tables turned. He walked out that door a couple years ago, didn't we? Looked like that was curtains. And then some other things happened. And then last August, guess what? The church voted on Brother McCoy to be the pastor. Would you agree with me that that, that was some tables that got turned I mean, that, that was some, there was a lot of tables that got turned for that to occur. We saw it with our very own eyes that God can turn tables. He didn't do it overnight, did he? It took some time. So when it comes to our place of service, well, God put him right here. Now, our particip participation in service, sometimes God has to turn our tables to get us into service, get us going. What do I mean by that? Well, okay, here's what I mean. I had my little list. I had my list. I'm going to Walmart last week. I mean, I'm on a mission. I've got four or five things here. I know I'm in my mind. I'm going. I know right where they're at. So I I go in there. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going there. But over here to my right, there they were. They were from Spectrum Cable. Do not ever look anybody in the eye that's from Spectrum Cable, because if you look at them in the eye. It's like a beggar on the street. If you look at them, they expect something. Don't ever look at them. Look down. I didn't look down, but I was going so fast, I didn't think it would make any difference. It did make a difference. His name was Cameron, African-American youth. He stayed right up with me. I mean, I've got my list. I got it right here. I'm going, man. I'm, go I'm on fire, man. Hey, sir, 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 I want to talk to you about Spectrum. I said, you got 30 seconds. I did have a track on me. I did not go there. I did not go there with the idea I'm going to witness to anybody. I, I don't know if it's a game with me. When I go to a store, I want to get in. I want to get out. I don't like, oh, this is, oh, this price here. Okay, let's look it over this one here. I can't do that. Ladies, you can do that. Do it all you want. Pray for your husband if he's with you. <laughs> So Cameron's following me, man. He's showing me for twenty nine ninety nine you can get this. For forty nine ninety nine you can get this. Seventy nine ninety nine you can get this. I said I got all that beat. 
and I'm still, we're still walking. He's walking with me. We're going from the front of the store all the way back to where the Oikos Triple Three yogurt was. That was my first stop. I'm getting the Triple Three yogurt. And he's going on and on. And I said, look, I got Verizon, man. I got you beat. We got two phones, router, internet, Wi-Fi, whatever else we got there. Disney, Hulu, Lulu, Woohoo. We got all the stuff here. You can't touch it. He goes, what all you got? I said, we got this. He goes, well, you can try this twenty nine ninety nine. I said, but you, you can't touch what we're paying. He says, what did you say you had again? I said, beep, 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 beep. We got that, all that. And he goes, hmm. He says, well, you could try it. I said, well, if I try that, will it make the Giants win? I mean, that was way off the wall. He goes, yeah. I said, you're not a Giants fan. <laughs> and I laughed at him. And then the Lord said, okay. I didn't go there to tell anybody about the Lord. And the Lord said, reach into your back pocket. And then I said, hey, I got a deal for you. You know that Jesus Christ loved you and died for you and he paid for your sins. And if you accept him as your savior, you'll get the deal of your life. He looked at me, you know, he was kind of stunned. <laughs> I said, well, here, read this when you get a chance. And and I said, uh, you did a good job, actually. I mean, you stayed right with me, and I, I commended him. You know, sometimes the Lord's got to give us a little poof, a little, little nudge there. So he turned my table. He'll turn your table. He'll, he'll get you on board there and participating, in, in the, at least in that part of service. It may be some other way he turns your table. And then he's going to turn the table when he guard, regarding the second coming of Jesus Christ. All right? When that trumpet sounds, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, when the trumpet sounds, it said that when he appears, when Christ appears, we shall see him as he is and we'll be like him. We'll be just like him as he is. In a moment and twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? When you think about his appearing, I was sitting on the front porch today. I think it was yesterday, got done mowing, weed whacking and trimming the shrubs and all that junk and I'm sitting there, I had some water, <clears throat> looking up there, looking up, there. looking up at the sky here, and there we go, and I was thinking about the Lord appearing, all right, Dean Martin now appearing, Don Rickles now appearing at Vegas. Frank Sinatra appearing here, or pick your person, appearing. So when they're appearing, what are they doing? They're appearing. You see them live, don't you? Now appearing, Mitch Hensley. What do you, there's Mitch Hensley. I'm not picking on you, but I'm just saying, he's appearing. And Christ, who is our life, when he is our life, shall appear. Sitting there looking at those clouds, and I said, so is he, when he sounds a trumpet, is he going to be like, this, when he's bigger than the universe, is there going to be a big Jesus up there looking down, pulling the trumpet away from his mouth and going, ha come on up. He's going to appear. And we're going to see him, and the world's not going to see him, and that'll be a, a, an astounding event to see him when he appears. That's not the second advent. In Revelation 19, that's the rapture. He's going to appear multiple times. He, when he appears, when he appears, when he appears. So when he appears, he's going to appear, right? But we're going to see something in the clouds there. And it's probably going to spook us a little bit. Like the disciples when Jesus was walking on water, they were terrified. They saw him walking, they thought it was a spirit. Well, I, you know, just being honest, if I saw a face that was taking the whole sky and smiling and maybe a wink or two and saying, come up hither, I might be a little wigged out. But anyhow, anyhow he's going to turn the tables. He comes as a thief in the night. He's stealing us from the devil. He's not going to get our bodies, not going to get our soul, not going to get our spirit. He's going to turn the tables. Man, and then the world's going to go bonkers after that for seven years, that tribulation after that tribulation, then he will come with us. He'll return with us. And then he's Revelation 19. I'll just read that a little bit. Revelation 19, when he turns the tables. 
Actually, you know, he's turning the table right now because he's letting America get taken down. You say, I don't like that. I don't like it either, but it's not my toy set. The earth is not mine. The kingdoms of this world are not mine. Did I like it when we had a Mayberry kind of country? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it when we were free, and we still have some freedoms. But he's letting it go because he's doing a -a rope-a-dope. He's letting George Foreman, he's letting the devil punch him out. Oh, 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 look at Look at LGBTQ. Oh, Jesus is very powerful. Oh, there's the uh, DEI. There's all the woke coming in. CRT in the schools, LGBTQ. Oh, where's Jesus at? The devil's just punching himself out. Revelation 19, verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth out the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. He's going to turn those tables And we're going to be right there with him when he turns those tables. I hope you're going to be uh, riding one of those horses, amen. If not, you can settle it tonight if you haven't. Let's have all heads bowed and eyes closed. And if you would, I'd like you to stand to your feet. We're going to have a word of prayer. And you feel like...